this video, my truck hits 250,000 miles. So the best thing you should do is put some 37s and brand new wheels on it as well as a whole bunch of other mods that have nothing to do with maintenance because it's a Toyota, it's got that covered. So take a seat, sit back, like the video if you enjoy it, and uh, let's get into this thing. I love this truck, man. We just pulled off the highway. I think I may have possibly caught a bag of dog food. And yes, yes we did. Wow. Oh no, it's actually not even. I've seen that I drove over it. I didn't see it come out from under me, so. Let me show y'all something really quick. It's a good looking truck right there, but we have a pulley somewhere in here making some bad sounds. It's definitely a pulley and we gotta figure out what it is. We have a little bit of a difference in the front and ride height of the truck. So we're gonna go ahead and change that out. This is the lift block that came out of the truck and this is the one that I'm putting in. If you can see, what we took out is a two inch lift block and what we're putting in is a one inch lift block. So it should do us a lot better. The new level that we put on there, we kind of just leveled the back end of the truck. So now it's the same ride height all throughout. The truck's on a big hill right now, so you can't necessarily tell, but it sits even now. All right, guys, we are at Gavin's. We're back in Georgia, and we have got a package from Custom Offsets and Kumo Tires. So I want to give a big thank you to Custom Offsets for sending out some wheels that we've got. We'll, we'll take a look inside of here. I just need to show you all this. Oh, boy. I don't think y'all are ready for it. good those are going on this and if you don't know what else is going on this that is going to be this right here and that says 37125R17 which means I got 17 inch wheels and 37s for this Tundra so we're gonna see what these brand new Kumo road ventures look like on these method MR315s hopefully it's pretty sick and tundras fit 37s with stock ride height with just a little bit of modification but man these wheels look sweet all right guys so if you look at it right here we have the new wheels on the truck but we have the old ones rolled up to it just so you can see how much smaller the old wheels were compared to the new ones these are 20 by 12s and these are 17 by 9s so these are a lot skinnier than these but just look at the difference of how tall they are the 37 makes such a big difference To make this truck not rub, we've had to cut a few things out because we got them big old dirty cylinders on there. So what we're gonna have to do is cut some stuff out. And if you don't see, we have cut and we have removed some metal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a plate and I'm gonna box this in right here eventually. But right now I'm gonna leave it the way it is, but I made it flush with the cab. So that way we'll clear those 37s. And I also bent this in and kind of hammered it in a little bit. The welds aren't the best, but I'll probably end up having to redo these cab mounts. But this will work for right now and we'll be able to clear 37s and see if there's no rubbing. Let's see if she rubs. Moving those big old 37s like nothing. Power steering pump is crazy on this thing. What the heck? Not touching at all. We're clearing a 37 at full lock. What the heck? This looks really good. The steering radius is actually really solid. I mean, we got 37s on this truck and this is what we're able to do. It's kind of nice. Let's go right. This is full lock. The truck cannot steer anymore. I'm at full lock right now. <laughs> With 37s, we're at full lock and not rubbing. Oh my gosh. Well, we're good now. We don't rub. Shams or anything like that, but my first truck I ever drove in high school was my dad's Tundra. And I drove it right into a telephone pole and right there. And telephone poles are $18,000 because I bought that one. This telephone pole is the pole that I bought because I wrecked my old Tundra into it back when this road was a little more aggressive and there was no curb. Slid off the road, slid, but now we got the new guy. So it's pretty cool taking the new guy to the old location. This is where your ancestor died. So. <laughs> I'm basically taking my truck to the old truck's grave. So while we're at it, 
Let's go to where the Tacoma flipped over. And this right here is where we flipped the old taco truck, and a lot of y'all know about that. Literally right about here is where I flipped that thing over, but as you can see, they're doing construction. But we ain't got no taco no more. We got the big old chalupa, the tundra. <laughs> Freaking sick. So it's kind of cool reminiscing on the old spots. So I wanted to show the truck the grave sites of the old ones and hopefully it doesn't have a new one eventually. Those 37s look so meaty on this thing. Oh my gosh, golly. This thing looks insane with those methods. Super big thank you to Custom Offsets for hooking up the methods. Super big thank you to Gavin and Kumo Tires for hooking up these 37s. This truck looks a million times better. Complete transformation. Oh my gosh, that's insane. guys we're back home so we've got yeet right there and we've got the truck right here i'm cleaning out yeet oh lord i'm dropping a box that that is car trim home sent some products check this out why would i get a door lock switch the real situation is this is an automatic window so if you look on my truck actually i'll just walk over here that is the passenger side window i was just looking at this does not say auto so the truck does not have auto down windows it's really dirty i need to get the whole thing detailed so don't mind the dust so i'll show you that in just a second and then i'm gonna go ahead and swap these out so i have a set for the entire truck and that doesn't mean just the passenger one will be auto all four of them will be auto. This is the driver's side switch. Let me show you how to install these things and it should be pretty simple. So I'll show you guys. Obviously this one has auto down so I don't have to press the button and it automatically goes down, but it doesn't have auto up. So no matter what I do, the window doesn't have auto up. And all of the rest of the windows in the truck, as you can tell, are you press the button and it does exactly that. It's not auto at all. It's just completely manual. Just as simple as, pulling that little bad girl out of there. You unplug that plug right there and then there's three Phillips heads that you gotta replace. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So there's these little tabs right here that you have to pull out, but they included a little tool that you can use. So you take this right here, pop it under and pop the tab out. And I already popped that tab out and there's two on this side as well that you have to pop out. Here's the old window switch. And as you can see, the new window switch looks identical, but just with auto switches all the way around. So pretty excited. Set that on there and pop it into place. It's pretty self-explanatory. Phillips head screw goes inside the Phillips head screw hole. No, that looks really good. Automatic windows all the way around. Let's put this thing back in. It's as simple as plugging this back in like that. Now it's in place and uh, set that back in its spot and press back down. Now we've got automatic windows all the way around. So this is the first time we're gonna try this. Okay, it's normal. I'm gonna try something now. Oh my gosh. Now that switch just pops right out and it should be as simple as taking the new one, sliding it back into place. Now we're clicked in. This thing's tight and solid in place. Now I gotta take the door lock and make sure that's oriented the correct way. And we are. So now that is in and now we have the auto switch on the passenger door. Oh wow, would you look at it? Would you just, would you just look at it? That's insane. So they're all auto down. My favorite part is they're all auto up. So they all could go up at the same exact time. That's actually really satisfying. What the heck? Damn, that's actually really cool. Sick. Dubs. That's something that's gonna make quality of life better because I always like hopping in the truck and I can just literally tap the buttons and then they go down. But then they also have the little manual mode so you can roll it up and you can roll it down whatever you want. That's sweet. Automatic windows and automatic up windows. It's gonna make quality of life a lot better. So thank you very much to Car Trim Home. These things look very sweet. If you wanna get these, you can go ahead and use my link in the description. Get these things for a discount and they probably have some for your vehicle because they have some for a lot of different makes and models. But if you have a Tundra, definitely worth getting. And just to show you all what these things look like at nighttime. And if you can tell right here, these are on and I'll turn it off real quick. So the lights are off 
and now they're on. So you can see the backlighting of the window switches. That's the difference between a stock halogen light inside of these tail lights right here versus the Oxbeam reverse light, which is insanely bright and also crystal white. So now all the lights on this truck are going to match because it's crystal white. Looks freaking sick compared to that crusty stuff. So those Oxbeam lights inside of the truck are so freaking bright, it's not even funny. The truck looks so much brighter and looks so much more amazing. So one thing I want to do eventually is get rid of this mahogany and get rid of this leather. I want to change this out for carbon fiber. So the same people that make these window switches that are all auto are the same people that make the carbon fiber trim and steering wheel for the Tundra. So I want to get that stuff next. Hopefully we can get those sent over next and I can do carbon fiber for the Tundra and show you all what that looks like. So Oxbeam was kind enough to send over pretty much everything you need to uh, install some rock lights, the whole entire kit, in fact. And these things are upgraded. Definitely the better version of rock lights because the last ones I had only had, uh, I think, four LED bulbs on them. So these should be a lot more bright. It's 5 a.m. Tanner's working on homework right now. Uh, do you mind filming me while I back out with the rock lights on? Because I just got the front rock lights installed. Now I have to go do the backs, but I'm gonna turn the truck around so I can just do the backs like this. Man, what are the chances of this? I just got stung by a bee. Look at that bee right there. I just got stung by one of, there's two of them and I got stung by one of them. What are the chances of that? Right on my hand, this thing's gonna swell up. You thought we were done with the mods? No, we have a new box that just got here, but we got cutouts for the Tundra. So we're gonna go ahead and install those things. Thank you very much to SPE Lab for sending these things out because these are going to make the Tundra exactly like the drift car to where we can turn up the volume and then lower the volume. <laughs> So what you're gonna need for this is a sawzall or some way to cut exhaust. You can use a handsaw if you want, but a sawzall is way easier. Under here, I have two lengths of exhaust pipe, one coming from both sides. I'm gonna cut this right there and then we should be able to get the cutoffs in on that area. To install these guys, I just like to run my hardware in, get a gasket on. You have to put a gasket on both sides of the cutout. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Installed. All right, guys, so here's the finished product of the truck right here. Everything we did in this video will go over right here and right now. So first off, we threw some 37s on there as well as some method wheels. It's been a while since I've had these on there and they've been running great. As far as the clearance goes, this is what I've dealt with. And um, after a little bit of time, it's still been fine. I'm still gonna box these in, but it's been working for now. I can go up and down curbs and it still doesn't rub at all on these 37s, which is pretty freaking fantastic. Next up, we threw an Oxbeam light bar on there, an RGB light bar, because the one that was on there was so bad looking if you haven't seen before. So we got a new light bar on there as well as the Oxbeam signal lights inside of there, which are super bright. Those are just the switchbacks. They're yellow like that, but whenever the daylight running lights are on, they're also white. If you look inside of here, we got the rock lights. If you ever put them in a Tundra or any truck, to be honest with you, make sure you put them behind the grill. It just looks amazing just to have lights behind the grill. If you're gonna have them up under here, might as well have them up under the grill as well. The rear rock lights are on as well. Those are down there. And this whole thing looks sweet with the rock lights on. The rear LED tail lights in there, which are super bright. And on the last thing with LEDs, we did the interior lights, which are all bright white. And those things look way better than they looked before for and they don't flicker anymore. The old ones flickered, the Oxbeam ones don't flicker. And to tie all that together, we'll go to the driver's side seat and I got an Oxbeam box. And that is an eight switch panel that's Bluetooth that you can connect to your phone and you wire it in like so. I used wire loom and actually went pretty kind of hard with it to make sure everything was clean. But basically, this thing has eight solid state relays and it just needs a power source and ignition source. And then from there, you have eight solid state relays that you can tap into anywhere and have different accessories. So one of those places is gonna be the exhaust cutouts. Flip the cutouts. I don't know if you can tell, but that cutout right there is open. 
And that brings me to my last mod that I've done to this truck. And I haven't shown you all this one yet, but I'll go ahead and surprise you. It's actually stupid easy to do. If you ever want to look it up, the link is going to be in the description. Remote start for the truck. Yeah, no, quite literally, you can put remote start on this thing. They have a video on their website how to install that. So if y'all get the kit and want to figure out how to do it, use theirs. But simply put, with the exhaust valves being open and with the remote start kit, I need a battery. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You hear them cutouts roaring. So let me show you something cool about Tundras with cutouts. All right guys, this is what the exhaust sounds like. Go ahead and downshift it. Oh, it sounds so good. And it pops too. quite crazy and that's what the difference between exhaust open and close is all right guys so that pretty much does it for all the mods that we just did on the tundra and hope you enjoyed the video if you've got a truck or tundra or anything do these mods to your truck and i guess we're gonna see how long it takes before this thing breaks it's a toyota so we might be waiting a good bit i guess we'll just have to keep throwing extra aftermarket mods on it until it does thank you for watching the video y'all have a great one remember to freaking send it